this March 22nd meeting to order. Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. I think we have a few guests in the audience, so uh, there'll be parts of the meeting that we might get to uh, that we address some of you. So uh, we have the agenda before us. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions from the agenda? Part five, uh, restroom of the I'm actually going to add two concerns of trustees. Number two will be Route 62 relocation. And number three, I'm going to add uh, safety committee. Anything else? Okay, the agenda will stand as edited. Uh, so the first thing that we have is unfinished business. Thank you. Unfinished business item number one is to amend a previous resolution to pay precision muscular <coughs> mechanics for our wellness program from the below bond. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. And that is the end of Unfinished. And that takes us to new business. Thank you. Do you want to introduce Yeah, yourself? actually, um, we've got our Ohio Edison External Affairs representative, Troy Rhodes, here. Um, but this Troy had reached out to me earlier today about introducing Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, trustees and uh, other members of the board here. I uh, just wanted to come up and say hello. Also to let you know that Amy Hopkins is uh, taking my place in this area. We've done a little reconfiguration of Stark County, similar to how it happened two years ago with Laura Tubo and I. We did a little bit of a switch. I'm, uh, Amy, fortunately, lives like 20 minutes from here, and I'm 60 minutes from here. So it's a little closer to her territory. Not that I don't mind the drive. This one will let some radio and all that kind of stuff. But still, um, so we're going through this process uh, of introducing Amy. She'll be taking over uh, for the evening. What I'd like to just say is thank you very much for all your support. Um, and know that Amy spent it doing this job for about 18 months. We'll do a phenomenal job for you also. So I appreciate your uh, uh, attentiveness to some of my emails that I send out to you, a few of them, to get out there. And uh, any issues that you have, hope to have been able to address them uh, appropriately for you. Uh, before I step away and let Amy sort of introduce herself and give her a little background, just a couple things I wanted to go over. You know, one, one of the unique things with Plain Township and a lot of the neighboring Stark communities is how many customers are there really in Ohio Edison Service Territory that you guys cover for the large population of Plain Township. We have about 615 customers. So that sort of lets you know where you stand on that. So every once in a while the questions may come up hey, what do we do from an Ohio Edison perspective? You may be curious about that. I was out on your website and I noticed that um, under your utilities, there's an opportunity to potentially put a link out there. Mm -hmm. So if people have any concerns or questions, you can just route them to that link and they can a answer questions like, how to report a street light that's out. You guys have six of them. One's a POL and five street lights somewhere out there, if you knew that or not, right? So how to report that, that street lights out. If there's any kind of problems, power outages, uh, winds in the yard, any questions that they may have, it may be simpler just to chase them right to that website and then to be able to get that. So I'll make sure Amy gets that to you. The other thing I wanted to, is the street lights yourself. So um, understanding and knowing where those street lights are, you know, it, so to help facilitate that, there is an LED program out there that's coming around and there's three options under that LED program if you're interested in converting those. There's one 
program where you purchase the LED lights up front is roughly about $210 a light, or you can put it on a payment plan, $200 and some dollars a light over four or five years. And then the third option is, is just on replacement. There's no upfront capital costs on that whatsoever. You just sign a contract. Once that light is uh, identified that it needs to be replaced, we just put it on an LED. You go under that LED rate. Might be something to look into. Again, Amy can uh, talk to you about that if you have any interest in that. So thank you very much. I'm always there. If Amy's on vacation, you'll probably be hearing from me anyway. Okay. Before Amy starts yeah. to speak, Troy, I'd like to thank you for your time. I know you've been a, a highly responsive to the touch of needs, but you've also been a very strong supporter of our salute to veterans. Yeah, absolutely. Program being a veteran yeah. yourself. So really appreciate that. Thank you. What you guys I honestly I know Amy Amy and I connected through the SAM Center because of our oh, presentation yeah. out there, so I know that there's additional support there, but I mean it's not just on the working front, it's on the civic community right. front as well. So I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for well those are tough shoes to follow. Well thank you for having me. Um, again my name is Amy Hopkins. Um, I've been with the company for about sixteen years. I've had various roles um, so I feel like I can serve the community very well, and I look forward to it. So, do you want me to put my cards? Yes. Because Evie, I would like to get together with you at some point to oh, talk sure. about the lighting district on Easton sure. um, that the township would do. Okay. So I will sure. reach out to you. No, please. I'll be me. perfect. Okay. Thank, right. you. Thank you. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the end of you. That takes us to the fiscal officer's report. Mr. Wolf. Thank you. Fiscal officer number one is a resolution to authorize the payment of pending awards in the amount of $127,165.59. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Fiscal officer number two is a resolution to authorize Payment of regular payroll in an amount not to exceed two hundred fifty thousand. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Hawes. Yes. Mrs. Harless. Yes. Mr. Sabo. Yes. Fiscal officer number three is a resolution to authorize payment for the following medical claims. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Hawes. Yes. Mrs. Harless. Yes. Mr. Sabo. Yes. Fiscal officer number four is the investment report. Yeah, still pretty low. Better than going the other way, though. Yeah, that's true. Okay, next thing. Um, fiscal officer number five is a resolution to authorize the additional benefits of longevity pay to members of the Utility Workers Union of America, AFL CIO Local 561 meet the requirements of the attached schedule effective April 1, 2022. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Fiscal officer number six is a resolution to authorize the following reallocations. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Fiscal officer number seven is a resolution to authorize a refund as follows for overpayments for EMS as requested by Ohio Building. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. That concludes the fiscal officer report. Thanks, Tom. That takes us to the administrator. Just uh, before I do my report, I just want Troy and Amy to know you guys don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. It's Welcome. Yeah, we understand. Okay, Thank perfect. You. Uh, you're welcome to stay. But um, so my item this evening is a resolution to enter into the attached agreement with CivPro for professional site design, specifically surveying for uh, the Oakwood Square Plaza, Clean Township Amphitheater. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Hawes. Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Thank you. That's the end of the administrator report. Thanks. That takes us to the fire department chief, Schallenberger. Uh, thank you. I've got the two items tonight. 
Item one is a resolution by Plain Township Board of Trustees to reimburse Ryan Jones the amount of $383.40 for his health care membership according to provision 37 of the collective bargaining agreement. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harlos? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Item number two is a resolution to amend resolution 22-138 for the purchase of for installation, labor, and payment of one natural gas generator for station 47858 Market <coughs> Avenue North. So second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. So this is a good amendment because it's cheaper. That is correct. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing, but cheaper. So uh, anything else? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. And that concludes fire for our Thanks, Chuck. It takes us to road. JP. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, road number one. My only item tonight is a resolution by the Plain Township Board of Trustees to authorize purchase and payment to United Rotary Brush for street sweeper brooms and brushes, not to exceed $5,840.40. So, uh, second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Thanks, JP. That takes us to zone, Mr. Ferrara. Thank you, sir. Item number one is a resolution to declare item A as an abatement payment. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mr. Sato? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. And item number two is a resolution to initiate an application to the Board of Zoning Commission for text amendment 580-22, short term rent. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Uh, this is a reset of the date for initiating this amendment to the Zoning Commission so that we're in line with the ORCs. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harps? Yes. Mr. Saylor? Yes. And that's all for zone. Thanks, Tom. That takes us to parks. Mr. Steinberg. Thank you. And number one is a resolution to authorize purchase and payment uh, from Central Farm and Garden for baseball field material and C, not to exceed $20,144.80 to be taken from fund 2901610599 and fund 2171610599. So uh, second. It's been moved and second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Item number two is a resolution to enter into a field agreement with Jeremy Randall. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Discussion? These are one of those outliers that were out before we changed the template. There'll be two or three more of these total coming back. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Item number three. <coughs> Uh, is a resolution to increase Ed Seebeck Jr.'s pay rate from 1560 to 1660 an hour for completion of a CDL Class B certification from funds 2171-610-112 or 2901-610-112. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harlos? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. And number four is a resolution to authorize uh, payment to Jerry Pate Turf and Irrigation for repairs to our Groundmaster 4700 and amount not to exceed 2149.38. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? This is the real mower we use at Diamond. It's the first major service in eight and a half years we've had to have on it, um, which is a, a complement to our, our mechanics as well as the durability of the machine. So just time. Okay. Roll call. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Item number five is a restroom update. Uh, Chief Sabo and I met out at the grounds today with our contractor. Um, all looks good, all's ready to go. They're going to bring a cleaning company in this week to touch it up. They're going to throw some seed and some fur and some straw down this week. We'll have keys and be open for business by the weekend. And once we see that all of our kinks, whatever issues we don't realize are there or work out, we'll schedule a repair. questions that's all for parts no looks good it's uh it's gonna be a nice addition that's for sure i'm excited okay thanks rob that takes us to communications
Yes, I have one item for communications. Um, we had a lady who lost her cell phone at the parks. And she was uh, had it in her stroller with her child, and um, we the the parks gentleman found our workers found her phone. We brought it up. Next thing you know, it was ringing. Uh, we missed the first call in, but the second one, she came in at the end of the day and just promised that I would let everyone publicly know how appreciative she was of them finding it, quickly getting up to the office with it and recovering it. So, thank you, uh, Rob, if you'll express that to your guys. Thank you. All right, very good. That uh, takes us to the portion of the meeting of public speaks. There's anyone in the audience that wishes to address the board uh, at this time? Please state your name and address for our fiscal officer, and you have the floor. Anyone? So I'm so, guessing. There's, I know about that. Yeah, oh, okay, so I'm guessing you are both here for merit badges. Yeah. Yeah. What merit badge? Uh, probably a citizenship. I'm guessing. Citizenship in the community. Is that both of you citizenship yeah, both, in the community? Both. Do you have any specific questions or anything that you would need us to help you with to help with this earning of this badge? Uh, no, I don't need it. I would suggest maybe you just take a copy of our agenda. Do we need to sign anything for you guys? Okay, perfect. Well, welcome. I hope you understand how government works a little bit better. I know some of this might have been confusing to you, but it's how we have to do business. Business by government has to be done in public, and uh, everything that we do from an official standpoint is done in public. So, um, is that, is that was sharing with them. I mean, the meetings are more so procedural formality. We get information before then the discussion happens in, happens in this context. Otherwise, it's a violation of the Ohio Sunshine Law, which means your business has to be done in public with the exception of a couple reasons that are conditioned um, for what we call executive session closed door because of um, privileged information in situa situations. So, so how far along in rank ranks are, are we? Able to I'm wife uh, right now. I'm working on my first class right now. Okay. So the one thing I, if I can jump, yeah. the one thing I can warn you about, warn you about, just advice. I did scouts. Get your Eagle Scout at all costs. Do not let the whole fume situation get to you. That's perfume and gas fumes. <laughs> because trust me, when you get about 16, it's the perfume and the gas fumes that typically derails most guys from getting. Much as it's funny, it's very it's very serious. I've got I think four friends that are all Eagle Scouts now. I will say I've got my four year pipe stone at home. So I mean the lessons you're learning, as much as you're know, like, what am I going to use these in life? I promise you, fundamentally fundamentals and principles will certainly carry through a lot a lot later in life. It's not always about that immediate return. It's about being able to play the long the long game and, and utilizing those skills so oh no I would agree with that so you're a life so you you got to finish up with what 21 merit badges yeah and, 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 yeah and, and I'm uh, sure there I are I have some. A two left okay good for Not you including nice. the one I'm working on good for you okay. so you're both welcome to come back anytime you want to any of these meetings so welcome and good luck, by the way, to both of them. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Okay. Nothing else from anybody in the audience. That takes us to concerns. Okay. Sorry, I, I just want to oh, say no. thank you for, you know, in, in, even though it's a, it's a public forum, but thank you for being welcoming to the kids and being, you know, accommodating and stuff. So thank you very much well, for you guys. To you thank guys. you. Yeah, it's kind of important to us, you know, from especially when they're, you know, they're doing merit badges regarding, you know, citizenship in any part. There's what? Citizenship in the community, citizenship in the nation, I forget what. I think there's one now that's even for the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That didn't exist, by the way, when I was just scout. But it didn't exist. Yeah. 
that as a scout guide. Sure. So thank you for those comments, though. Uh, so that does take us to concerns of trustees. So the first, I think, Scott, is yeah, yours. Tax and Center Review Council meeting. Um, short is the end of the hospitality was continued. The only question is, and they come up every year um, in Mary Jo Slick, is the, part, or the number of part timers in um, the, the hotel. The short is, their number of part timers is about half of what they were planned, but payroll numbers are well, well over. So um, it was continued really with. No challenges. Um, it's going to be expiring the end of next year, so we've got one more year of hearing. And this was a 15, 15 year agreement, so um, given what they went through, along with all the other um, hot hotels through this funny COVID stuff, um, they've certainly held their own and they've actually probably been one of the more respectable hotels. Uh, Second, second one, I was anticipating this one being a little, little bit touchy, but it went off without a hitch, and that's Oakwood Square, because last year they were on probation for information being put in the way, so I heard about this one the whole way through, and we got it in super, super early. I think things I want to call out, because if we recall, you know, what the plaza looked like back here about five years, five years ago, the biggest challenge we had was with the school. The reality is, is we're not because they get their levy, they collect their dollars, plus they're getting 50% on the improved value, something that hasn't been vote, vote, voted voted upon. So you took a property that was almost $600,000 in arrears. That's real money in back taxes. It was due. It's been brought to current. So that's a good that's a good story in and of itself. But you know. The tax abatement was conditioned just strictly on the discount drug mark job numbers, which their original agreement was a real property investment of approximately 4.2 million with some additional personal property of 1.7, then looking at 15 full-timers and 20 part-timers with a payroll of approximately $600,000. Well, let's leapfrog forward here to 2021. They've got real property investment value of 7.9 million personal property investment of $3 million. But for jobs, 29 full-time and 48 part-time. That's crushed. It's, 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 over, the, it's, yeah. over, it's over double yes. with payroll over a million dollars. This goes to show when a tax incentive or tax abatement is done properly within measure control, the impact it can have. Because I, I know we're all biased here, but to me this is one of the picture-perfect examples for anybody in Stark County to use. And again, these numbers, it doesn't include every other new business that has come back in there. And the reality is that Plaza being 100% leased out, even when it was built new, it was never 100% leased out. At max, it was 70, and it was probably only physically occupied by 55 to 60%. So that, that was con that was continued with it without que without question. So um, we're we're in good good shape overall. Yeah, I would agree with that. Right. I mean, when you s see that kind of return for what little sacrifices you've made, uh, there's going to be no return if the project doesn't come to fruition. Yeah. So you know, don't like the answer. Yeah, exactly. Fifty percent of something is better than a hundred percent of nothing. So, good job on that, and good job on these guys back here as well. Anything else? No. Okay, so a couple things I want to talk about. I'm trying to be brief, but these, both of these are fairly important. Uh, so, we did an organizational meeting with all the partners involved with the Route 62 relocation project. So, uh, Chief was there, JP, Lisa, myself, Brooke, uh, and uh, we met with all the other partners that are involved directly in that project, which would be ODOT, Great Lakes, uh, some of the engineering firms, some of the public information firms. Uh, and although that project is not ours, so we have zero work 
within that project, we are going to suffer the fallout from that project. So there are going to be things that we're going to want to communicate directly, and they have established that communication tree, if you will. Uh, but there are going to be things that are going to be happening that we want to try to use our social media sources and any information that we could get out to help them with information uh, in regards to traffic patterns and traffic congestion that are going to take place for the duration of that project. So for us, I can tell you, being involved in other projects, the fallout that we're going to get is we're going to get complaints from those neighborhoods about traffic, more specifically in the early morning hours, in the evening hours of constant flow of traffic back into our neighborhoods. Because people are going to learn that's going to be the shortcut routes and they're going to go through there. And I can tell you, just after the accident that happened there uh, the other morning, I, I knew something was going on out on the highway because I, if I would have counted them, I could almost promise. There was probably a thousand cars that went up and down my street. And if 10 of them stopped at that stop sign, that would have been a miracle. So I think there are going to be times when we're going to see this. So I think we have to kind of pool our resources together to figure out how can we best both cope and maybe accommodate that kind of thing. Uh, and I, you know, it's it's very tough. I, I realize it's... I think, I think to, build, to build off that, there's clearly a point you're speaking to, but the residents, whether you like it or not, you must understand, and it's not going to change whether we say Correct. it or the sheriff says it. Every one of those vehicles, as long as they're going the speed and they're meeting the weight limit, they legally have a right to be on that road. It's not it's not your road, it's the public, it's the public's road. Now, to your point of if we could have got ten cars to stop and stop, well then I'm sure the sheriff will be happy to be stopping and ticketing and you know, we'll, we'll help change behavior one way one way or another, but it's important that the public realizes okay, yeah, you have a couple hundred cars through there now for the duration of the project. You don't have to like it, but that's how it's going to be as long as they're compliant with speed and, speed and weight limits. So it's going to be a very aggressive. It's already started, and they're moving dirt like crazy now. So uh, if you get up that way, you're going to see there's a lot going on in a short period of time. Did I miss anything, guys? Yes. I think, too, I mean, let, just as a backdrop for the folks that are in the crowd, this is a massive project. It's not like it's just happened within the last six months. John and I started dealing with this two and a half years ago, almost three. No, because well, Brooks going into three. It's been three. It's been every bit of three. Oh, absolutely, three plus, three plus yes. years. The state had come through with like six different plan options, and every last one of them was horrible. So we didn't just say, "Hey, they're horrible." We come back with all our feedback. And lo and behold, they come back with a totally new plan. But they adopted probably at least 85, if not pushing 90 percent of our recommendations. Which is un which is unheard heard of, but you know considered a, a win win on oh, this inevitable. So, so just to give you an idea, that's a twenty million dollar project overall, fourteen million just to move the road, but it's a twenty million dollar project. Buying all of that, that's one mile of road. <laughs> but it's going to improve safety. If you've ever been up through there, and you don't realize how many private drives actually enter and exit off of that four-lane highway. It's super dangerous. So they're going to straighten that out a little bit, but it's one mile or $20 million. So, and actually, they're, they, they think they're going to be done by the end of, what were they talking? 23? which is more aggressive than what they thought. So, anyhow. Okay, second thing uh, that I have, I just want to bring everybody up to date on our um, safety committee. We periodically meet. Uh, what we tried to do when we ori originally established it was to uh, just follow the process of evaluating a close call or evaluating a particular incident 
then pushing it back out to all of the departments within our operation so that they can individually reevaluate how would that affect our department and then how in turn we would uh, create either an SOG or train uh, for uh, possible future situations. And uh, this one happened to have been a close call. Uh, one of our road employees almost got hit in an area where they were following every safety protocol that they could have possibly followed. And what we realized after that, and by the way, Captain Carver, thank you for coming to that meeting. We did invite Captain Carver. He had a lot of input on it. And he pointed out one very important thing that we also have to push back out to our employees is that you could have a situation where you are following every possible safety situation and you encounter an impaired driver and no matter what you try to do you're going to possibly have a situation so again it just enhances that mentality of heightened awareness that not everybody is paying attention since we had that meeting by the way there have been nationally a firefighter that was hit and injured severely because of smoke that drifted off of the road and he wasn't even in the roadway that was one and two days ago two Pennsylvania uh, state highway police whatever their upper level state police says two of them were hit and killed by an impaired driver over there so you know Law enforcement is aware of it, parks is aware of it, road is aware of it, fire is aware of it. We're just using that close call to go back and revisit all our situations. So, uh, and we're gonna continue to do that throughout uh, you know, the process of whether we have close calls or an incident, or if just something comes up where we say, hey, it's time that we go back and we refresh everybody. So good job, guys, I appreciate your your input at that meeting. Tom is also there. So, uh, you know, we include every, every department in the township is included in those meetings for either input or what they're going to take back to their respective employees. Okay, that's it. Anything else on the safety committee? You guys have anything to add? All of you were there. Eric leads those, by the way. Thanks, Eric, for setting all those up and uh, putting all that material together. Anything else? Chuck, JP. Okay, thanks. All right, so um, that takes us to the approval of the minutes for March the 8th, and I will so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Haas? Yes. Mrs. Harless? Yes. Mr. Seba? Yes. So we do have a need for an executive session. Uh, be it hereby resolved by the Plain Township Board of Trustees, Star County, Ohio, to, rejourn, to adjourn to executive session at 6.33 p.m. on this uh, March 22nd as authorized under Ohio Revised Code 121.22G for the purpose of the consideration of 1D, discipline of a public employee or official, 1F, compensation of a public employee or official, 4, preparing for conducting or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees, and 7A and B. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Hollis? Yes. Mrs. Carlos? Yes. Mr. Sabo? Yes. Thank you all.